Hello everyone, this is Sam and welcome to Englogic, where I help advanced English learners and teachers improve their English by analysing its mathematical and logical patterns. And today we're going to have an in-depth look at all the English vocabulary that is often used in everyday life in most languages. And I will show you all their hidden meanings and I will prove to you that you already know a lot of advanced vocabulary without even realising it. So let's dive right in. Let's start from pancakes. Pancakes are called pancakes because they are thin, flat cakes cooked in a pan. And flat as a pancake means extremely flat, squashed. So if you keep a sandwich in a bag for a very long time, it's then flat as a pancake. Or your hair can be flat as a pancake if it's squashed like that. Pan is a general term for a round metal container used for cooking. We have saucepans, which are the deep ones, and frying pans, which are the thinner ones. But pan can also be a verb. To pan means to strongly criticise a piece of art, a film or a play in the newspapers or on TV. If you pan a camera, or if it pans in a specific direction, it means that it follows the object that it's filming in that direction, going like that. So if you have a camera, you can pan it like this. You can also pan for a metal, which means that you take some soil and you wash it in order to separate the metal that you're looking for from other substances. And a very important meaning of the verb pan is to pan out. To pan out is a very good phrasal verb that means to develop, to continue, to progress in a specific way. So, if you say, I want to see how things pan out, it basically means I want to see how things go. It also means to be successful, so if you say, my idea didn't pan out, it means that it wasn't successful, so it didn't progress, it didn't evolve. Pan as a prefix means including everyone, including all elements. So pan-European means including the whole of Europe. And funnily enough, pandemic means something, in this case a disease, that affects everyone all around the world. And a great combination with pancakes is Nutella, which stems from the English word nut from hazelnut and ella, which is the Latin prefix that means sweet, small, cute. And nut has a lot of meanings in English. As a noun, nut is the general term that describes dry brownish fruit in a hard shell. For example, peanut, walnut, hazelnut. It's also a round piece of metal with a hole in the middle that is screwed onto a bolt. Nut or nutter is an informal way to call someone crazy. And a tough or hard nut is someone difficult to deal with. And a hard or tough nut to crack is a difficult problem or someone difficult to understand. The informal word nuts means testicles, but if I say, are you nuts, it means, are you crazy? And if I say that she's nuts about animals, it means that she loves animals. She'll go nuts if I lie again means that she will become very angry if I lie again. And her fans went nuts when she arrived means that they became really excited. Another very common word is laptop. And we call it laptop because it's a small computer that you can keep on your lap. Lap is the flat surface between your hip and your knee when you're sitting down. So someone can sit in or on your lap. A lap is also a complete single journey around a racetrack. And if I run three laps of the park every day, it means three complete rounds. And if I swim 30 laps in the swimming pool, it means 30 journeys back and forth of the swimming pool. Lap, or leg, means a segment of a journey. So if I say that the last lap of my holiday will be from Rome to London, it means that the distance Rome-London will be the last part of my journey. I would love to live in the lap of luxury, which means that I would like to have a lot of money and therefore have a very easy and comfortable life. 
If the result of something is in the lap of the gods, it means that it's out of your control. You can't do anything about it. It's out of your hands. If an opportunity falls into your lap, it means that you get it without even working for it, without making any effort. And now we understand what lap dance means. It's a dance that is performed on someone's lap, the flat surface between the hip and the knee. To lap is also a verb. If water laps against something, it means that it moves towards it and it hits it, like waves. And if an animal laps a liquid or laps it up, it means that it drinks it by putting its tongue into it. And if I say that she's lapping up all the attention that she's getting, or that she's lapping it up in Thailand, it means that she's enjoying it a lot. Now it's time to talk about technology. The reason why the icon of the dating app Tinder is a flame is that Tinder actually means the material that burns very easily when you want to start a fire. The work app LinkedIn, not LinkedIn, comes from LinkedIn, which is a synonym for tie-in. If I say that this topic links in with the discussion, it means that they are connected. And if I say that the launch party will link in with the arrival of the new CEO, it means that these two events will happen at the same time. We also have Outlook. If I say that she has a positive outlook on life, it means that her general attitude towards life is positive. If I say the political outlook is gloomy, it means that there is a very negative forecast or prediction for the political future of the country. And if a room has an amazing outlook from the window, it means that it has an amazing view. And it's now time to move to Hollywood. There is a little bit of controversy as to the origin of this word, but we can see it as the combination of holly, which is a plant, and wood, which is a group of trees. And talking about Hollywood, we should mention Tom Cruise, not Cruise. Cruise is a holiday on a large ship, and as a verb, it means to sail along in the sea, usually for pleasure, and to cruise also means to look for a sexual partner in a specific place or a dating app. And what about Harrison Ford? A ford is an area of a river where the water is not very deep, so you can cross it, and that's where we get Oxford from. Oxford comes from ford for oxen, which are animals very similar to bulls. And from La La Land we have Emma Stone. Stone has a lot of meanings. The most common one is a solid piece of rock. It can also be the hard part of some fruits, for example peaches and cherries in British English. In American they call it pit. It can also be a ball that forms inside your organs, and kidney stones, for example, are very, very painful and they need to be removed surgically. A stone, with its plural as stone, is an imperial unit of weight that equals 6.35 kilograms. To leave no stone unturned means to do everything that you possibly can to solve a problem or to find something. And if you say that the supermarket is one stone's throw away from your house, it means that it's very close to your house. If you are made of stone, or if you have a heart of stone, it means that you have no emotions or you don't show them. And if you say that nothing is set in stone, it means that what you're thinking about are just ideas, they're not definitive, and they can change. To stone is also a verb. If you stone someone, it means that you throw stones at them, and if you stone fruit, it means that you remove its stone. To be stoned is how you feel after smoking marijuana. The most important sign you see on the road when you drive is stop, so let's talk about that. To stop someone from doing something means to prevent or to block someone from doing something. But the word stop as a verb and a noun has a lot of meanings that I would encourage you to look up because they are all very useful and important. Here, we're only going to have a look at a couple of them. I will stop at nothing to find my biological parents means that I am ready to do whatever it takes and anything possible in order to find my parents. He stopped by his mum's house to say hi means that he made a very quick visit to his mum. And we will stop over in Munich for three hours means that we will stop shortly in Munich before continuing our journey, usually by plane.
If the new project came to a stop, it means that it ended. And if someone put a stop to it, it means that they decided to end it. And if you pulled out all the stops to make sure that her party would be amazing, it means that he did everything that he possibly and physically could to make sure that that would happen. And now let's go back to food by talking about breakfast. Breakfast has a very specific meaning because in that time we break the fast. Fast is an amazing word that has a lot of different meanings based on the part of speech that it is. As an adjective, it usually means quick. But if your phone is five minutes fast, it means that the time that it shows is five minutes ahead of the actual time. If you're a fast learner, it means that you learn skills very quickly. If a piece of material is colour fast, it means that its colour will not change when you wash it. And the famous name of the film Fast and Furious means done and happening very quickly with a lot of energy. The adverb fastly doesn't exist. We simply say fast, which means quickly. But if I say that I was fast asleep, it means that I was sleeping very deeply. To fast, as a verb, means to eat nothing or very little for a prolonged period of time, which is how we get intermittent fasting, which is a diet plan that consists in long periods without food, followed by shorter periods where you can actually eat. We can fast before a blood test or for religious reasons, for example for Ramadan for Muslims. Fast as a noun means exactly the idea of not eating. So when you eat in the morning, you break the fast because you interrupt this prolonged period of not eating and this is how we get breakfast and we will finish our lesson on a very famous board game cluedo cluedo comes from clue which is an object or a piece of information that helps you solve a mystery the police look for clues in a murder investigation and a very sophisticated expression to use is a clue as to why they disappeared. The construction as to is very formal and very good in English exams. If I haven't got a clue about chemistry, it's an informal way to say that I have no idea, no knowledge, and I don't understand chemistry at all. And if I've been away for two weeks, I need someone to clue me in on what's been happening. So I need someone to give me all the details and information regarding what happened while I was away. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And if there are any English words that you use in your native language and that you would like to know the meaning of, please do leave a comment down below and I will make sure I reply to it. And in the meantime, I will see you next week with my next video.